Charlie started talking about taking out segregated schools. Charlie started to talk about how to take on segregated schools. There were two ways. One way was to go into the courts and challenge it head on. Charlie started talking about how to take on segregated schools. There were two ways. One way was to go into the courts and challenge it head on, arguing that segregation was unconstitutional. The other way was to use the Plessy decision to insist that states provide truly equal schools. To insist that the states provide truly equal schools for Negro students. We call that Jim Crow Deluxe. We call that Jim Crow Deluxe. On June 9, 1952, the Supreme Court announced that they would hear our school cases, which we had in South Carolina, Kansas, Delaware, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. These cases were bundled together and called Brown versus the Board of Education. <clears throat> May it please the court. I speak on behalf of the Negro school children of South Carolina who have raised their attack on the validity of the South Carolina Code, which states, it should be unlawful for pupils of one race to attend schools provided for students of another race. The court must weigh the rights of these Negro school children against the state policy of South Carolina. And if that policy violates their rights, then the court is obliged to say, reluctantly or otherwise, that that policy has come up against the 14th Amendment, which guarantees all citizens equal treatment under law. Yes, Justice Reed, the state does have the responsibility to maintain law and order, but I believe that, no, Justice Frankfurter, it would not be gerrymandering of school districts. We would, uh, sir, I think what's important to establish is the principle that segregation by race is not legal. It would be impossible to say right now precisely how it would work. Frank Furter shot back at me. It is very important, Mr. Marshall. It is very important, Mr. Marshall, to know before one starts out where one is going. You've listened an hour to make your case. And the judges can interrupt you anytime they want. And they really peppered me. They interrupted me 43 times. I had this one opportunity to convince them that segregation was morally wrong, and I got unhinged by their questions. Then, a bombshell. The Supreme Court ordered both sides to come back and re-argue the case. The Supreme Court ordered both sides to come back and re-argue the case. The Supreme Court ordered both sides to come back and re-argue the case. May it please the court. May it please the court, as I understand the position of the Distinguished Defense Counsel. May it please the court, as I understand the position of the Distinguished Defense Counsel, his justification for segregation in South Carolina is, one, they just got together and decided amongst themselves that it is best for the races to be separated. And two, two, that segregation has existed for over a century. Neither argument, to my mind, is any good. The Negroes who are forced to submit to segregation are all American citizens who, by accident of birth, are a different color. Color makes no difference insofar as this court is concerned. May it please the court, as I understand the position of the Distinguished Defense Counsel, his justification for segregation in South Carolina is, one, that they just got together and decided amongst themselves that it is best for the races to be separated, and two, that segregation has existed for over a century. Neither argument, to my mind, is any good. 
the Negroes who are forced to submit to segregation are all American citizens who, by accident of birth, are a different color. Color makes no difference at all insofar as this court is concerned. The only way this court can decide in opposition to our position is to find that, for some reason, Negroes are inferior to all other human beings. Nobody will stand up in this court and say that, because they would have to justify it. The only thing that can justify continued segregation is a determination that the people who were once in slavery shall be kept as near to that condition as is possible. Now is the time we submit that this court should make it clear that that is not what the Constitution of the United States stands for. Now was in their hands. <laughs> we had months to wait, and waiting makes me itchy. <laughs> 17 May 1954, the highest court in the nation ruled that America could no longer humiliate its colored citizens by setting them apart. <clears throat> Our country, my schoolmate Langston Hughes said it best, oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be, the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain must bring back our mighty dream again, oh yes. I say it plain, America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath. <laughs>